Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you very much for being here. I assure you that this next session is going to be incredibly illuminating because it pertains to something that infiltrates your life and mine, and we just don't completely know the extent of it just yet. Uh, my two guests on this next session are both entrepreneurs, startup experts who've found themselves in an area which is at the cutting edge, not just of warfare, but also of the daily life of millions of Indians, something that promises to make people's lives better, this country safer, and hopefully play a really big part in India's future technology revolution. We're talking about drones. It's something that you're all aware about. You've seen drones taking pictures of couples at weddings. You've seen drones being flown by hobbyists. But I can assure you that you and I perhaps don't really know just how deep into our lives drones actually go. Recently, you heard about drones inf infiltrating from across the border in Pakistan and entering Jammu and mounting an attack. A few days ago, you heard about drones dropping vaccines in some far-flung areas in our country. Two different kinds of infiltrations, but infiltrations that affect our lives and affect our security. And that's why it gives me really great pleasure in introducing our two next guests. Ankit Mehta first is the CEO and founder of Idea Forge. Now, this is a company that has pioneered drone technology in the country. This is a company that supplies drones across the board, not just to the military, but all manner of civil institutions. And we're going to talk about the amazing things Ankit's drones actually do. Ankit, welcome. Our second panelist today is someone who used to be in the Indian Air Force and is now behind the scenes helping the Indian Air Force, the Indian Army, and the military see better, fight better, train better using artificial intelligence and drones. Samir Joshi is the CEO and founder of New Space Technologies, and he is our second panelist. Samir, welcome. Before I begin, I also want to quickly tell all assembled here that both of these entrepreneurs run companies that this year have bagged very prestigious, significant contracts with the Indian military. So their drones are now flying with the Indian military and actually actively, as we speak, keeping this country just a little bit safer. And as a defense journalist myself who has seen India spend billions upon billions of dollars for military technology from the outside, it gives me great pleasure that this future technology is being built, designed, developed, and supplied by Indians, for Indians, and made right here in India. And I want a big round of applause for that because this is what the future is really all about. Welcome, Ankit. Uh, welcome, Samir. Thank you very much for being here with us. Uh, both of these entrepreneurs um, live in different parts of the country, and they've come here to Delhi uh, because, uh, obviously, because of the conclave, but they also come here very often because they lead very busy lives talking about drone technology with the powers that be. They've got a lot of meetings going on. Ankit, I want to start with you, and I want to start with what's new right now. Your company, and we at India Today reported it first, has started supplying drones to the Indian Army in the backdrop of what we've seen happen in Ladakh. Now, I know we can't get into any specifics, but I want you to paint a picture for our audience here of what your drones, as we speak now, are doing for the Army in Ladakh. And as a journalist who's been there, I know that they're providing a technology and a capability that has never been available before. Paint us that picture, Ankit. So, we all remember what happened during the uh, Galwan tragedy that our country went through. And one of the biggest reasons why we could not predict those kind of moments was because in those extreme harsh environments, there is no availability of intelligence unless you have technology to aid and support that. We do have a certain set of systems that can keep an eye on those areas and those borders. 
but typically what we find is that uh, these larger systems that get deployed ultimately are fewer in number and they can keep eyes only on as many number of areas uh, as we can afford to deploy them and also it is difficult to create the infrastructure required to deploy those kind of systems. So the Indian Army which has been looking at the drone technology for a really long while now uh, decided that they want to actually induct systems which are more in number distributed surveillance to look at these very very precious uh, areas of our country and therefore they decided to go for purchasing systems that can help us keep that eye at that altitude in those environmental conditions and I think today the systems that we are delivering to them are helping them keep those eyes on those areas to give them unprecedented views of what they never saw was even existing on the other side or had already been done uh, to uh, you know to their surprise and uh, finally be able to get more familiar with the terrain that while we are intimate with but we only see the ground view of it not the god's view of it one of the amazing things ankit is very modest but one thing i can tell you for sure is that with the drones that have just been supplied by ankit's company the indian army ladies and gentlemen in ladakh for the first time has actually seen what the other side looks like in color so far they've had fuzzy black and white images. I'm sorry we can't show you those images because they're classified, but the first color high resolution images of what the other side is doing. There's been new information about bases. It's incredible. In a moment, I'm gonna show you a demonstration. You'll have to wait just a few seconds for that. Samir, I'd like to bring you in. Samir, while Ankit's company, Idea Forge, has supplied surveillance drones, which are now in Ladakh, Samir's company bagged a contract earlier this year to supply swarm drones. Now, swarm drones is another phrase that many of you may have heard about. This is cutting edge stuff. These are drones that fly in collaboration, you know, conduct missions in a collaborative manner. They're talking to each other. There's a great deal of software going on. But for the benefit of this audience and for all of us, Samir, tell us about what swarm drones are and how they're going to plug into the Indian military. What kind of roles will they perform? Yeah, thank you, Shiv. Uh, swarm drones basically are a system with a collection of a large number of robotic entities. Now, swarming can be in air, on land, or uh, on the sea. But specifically, taking a look at swarming in air, these are drones which work together in a cooperative manner using only algorithms with minimal human on the loop setup. So that is the first differential. Uh, what you'll take note of the way that, you know, UAVs working together uh, have been uh, taking place over the years. Two things are very important to define swarming. First, the capability of each drone to not strike into the next drone which is around it. So this is called cohesion. Now, this is something which is only possible if the drone is aware what is around it and how it is to, you know, kind of circumvent around another drone which is coming towards it. The second aspect which is important is the drone or the swarm's ability to interact with the environment it is flying. If, let's say it's in a terrain, in a mountainous terrain, it should know that there is a mountain there and I have to go on top of it or I have to circumvent it. So interaction with the environment. A drone, a mass drone, you know, it's like a flock of birds flying together. These birds, one, never strike each other, and second, they don't go and bang themselves into a tree or into any kind of obstacle. Now, swarm drones are inspired by biological events, like, uh, you know, how certain bees operate together or birds operate together, or, you know, these are flocks of birds operating together. So they are inspired by how they do it, and the algorithms generally mimic them. However, these can be customized specifically in the military domain. It is very important how you utilize all of these UAVs together to carry out a certain class of mission. There is only one aim for a swarm mission, and that is saturation. Saturation of a certain class of target or saturating the battlefield where you can see more because you've got more eyes in the sky you can carry out more kind of attacks, various kinetic and non-kinetic. And last but not the least, 
you have so many numbers that even if some of them are shut down, you still have dominance over that area of interest. These are the big, big benefits which you know, come, especially in the military class of swarming. And as we go forward, I'll also tell you more about the civilian aspects. Yeah. Just imagine, just imagine a large swarm of UAVs working together, going in for a disaster relief mission. There has, so now these will be the first responders. You know, recently Air Force had a competition called the Meher Baba Prize. This was all about this, the first responders. Generally it takes six to eight hours for some information flow to take place. How many people have survived a catastrophic event? This is where you launch a big swarm of drones. These guys are going to go there, divide the area amongst each other, and scan it and send you the first report. How many survivors? Where the flooding has happened, or where a certain catastrophe has happened? What is the state of affairs there? They are all building up a situational awareness through saturation. So applications are varied, yeah. but swarming is here, and it's here to stay, and you'll see more and more of it, not only in military, but in your own lives very soon. And speaking about drones in our lives very soon, uh, a, very, uh, a very exciting piece of technology that both of these gentlemen are, uh, and their companies are involved with is drones in the civilian sphere. It's not all about the military. You know, how many drones can the military actually use? But believe me when I say in the next 12 months to 24 months, you're going to see drones entering many new aspects of your life. You'll either see it directly or you'll see it indirectly. You won't know, but a drone had something to do with how you've been able to achieve something or receive something. The drone you see right next to me, sitting here, it's an actual drone, it's not a dummy. It's called the Rhino. It's built by Ankit's company. And I'm going to ask Aditya, my friend now, on the screens behind me, two of these drones are gonna take off as we speak. Not here in Delhi but far away in Mumbai. And I'm gonna show you how, and Ankit's gonna demonstrate how, he's actually gonna operate the camera on those drones with an app on his phone, sitting here in Delhi. This is technology that's already being used. We're gonna have that video up on our screen in a bit. There's a little bit of a lag because we're sitting in Delhi and these drones are in Mumbai, but that's live. That, those are, that's live imagery you're seeing of an idea forged drone flying over Mumbai, and Ankit, who's got that phone in his hand right now, you can also he's, sign. yeah, Ankit, why don't you demonstrate it to us, and then I'll, then I'll take it over, and I'll show you how easy it is. One little app, everyone knows how to swipe, and pan, and pinch, that's all it takes to actually show, that's, that's Ankit doing that, by the way, he's, he's panning the camera on that drone, nobody else, he's, he's, he's flying it, he's like showing you the camera. Now, this is technology that's already involved, and the drone that you're looking at here is the one that's flying in Mumbai. And uh, Ankit, this isn't just a toy, right? This isn't just a toy. This is a drone that, that uh, yeah, I'm looking at Ankit doing it. It's amazing. I'll, I'll, I'll take it over. Ankit, I'll ask you a question and then I'll play around with it for a while. Yeah, go ahead. Absolutely. The, the, the thing about this drone that you see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, is that these drones, hundreds of them are deployed across the country to map India's villages. It's a part of a big government scheme, and these drones are already being used by the government to map villages and get exact information on property to demarcate where our villages are, how big our villages are, to help in welfare schemes. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, this is the first time uh, that uh, India is going to map all the Abadi areas of where the villages actually stay and uh, map all of those areas using drones under a scheme called the Swamitwa scheme and be able to provide digitized land records which are irrefutable to those uh, farmers for the first time to get them into the economic mainstream of our country. So I think this is one of the largest schemes out there. And this is feed from one of our drones which can actually be controlled wherever you are sitting in a command and control center or right in front of you, multiple people in your organization can actually see this and control the feed of the drone based on their requirements and needs despite somebody in the field operating the drone and giving you a bird's eye view of what's happening on the ground situation. So we're building this technology not just to do the activity on the ground at the last mile, but to bring it back to the consumers and the decision makers to make sure that they have that exact information that is required to take a decision on that time at that moment on ground. So, let me show you that. Let me try to do that. I'm a rookie, Ankit's the expert here. <laughs> yeah. 
Ankit, show, show us how much that uh, uh, drone can actually zoom. This is incredible. I want to repeat what I just said. This is a drone that's, it's not a toy. I mean, what you're looking at here is a real thing. And a bunch of these all across the country is, are literally sort of harvesting visual data. And I'm glad, Rahul, you asked about zoom because the zoom aspect of it is very, very important. Now, the cameras that are uh, integratable on these drones can be changed. Very, very high resolution drones are, uh, cameras are possible on these drones to increase the, you know, the clarity of the images you get because the demands that the government's making on you, Ankit, for these drones is, you need to be able to look up, you know, until like centimeters and meters because we're talking about villages and property and that kind of thing. Absolutely. So uh, we are demanded that we provide resolutions which are down to centimeter levels as well as we are required to geolocate those points on ground with absolute accuracy of very, very high precision. So you can only call it a land record when it has that level of accuracy, which is irrefutable even at any point in time in the future. And now this is the first time we're creating actual ground evidence of what was mapped and their exact coordinates so that in future at any point in time you can go and exactly locate uh, where that property is and what are its dimensions and what it what was its position when it was surveyed, and you can resurvey it to get its new condition in terms of what the property means. So yeah. these drones are required to actually go very, very close to the ground. For surveillance, again, you need to provide zoom uh, applications. You need to move away from a lot of what you do in wedding photography. From that perspective, you need to go closer to your target, and you need to stay significantly far away from the target to be able to do such kind of operations in safer environment for the operator and that's what we enable for our users where we make sure that they are able to do those operations without people realizing that they are being monitored particularly when we are talking about counter insurgency yeah. counter terrorism and a lot of intelligence activities so these systems day to day help us monitor those situations as we speak on ground in fact uh, I have a fun uh, snippet that every 15 minutes, one Idea Forge drone is launched in the sky in our country today. That's incredible. Big hand for that. Every 15 minutes, a made in India Idea Forge drone is actually deployed. Samir, uh, you're working on the cutting edge with the military right now. As civilians, we'd like to know what someone like you thinks about maybe three or four areas of life, everyday life, not the military, where you think drones could play a game-changing role in the future. We know about logistics, we know about the Amazons, and we know about the vaccine deliveries. Are there any other areas in our lives that where you see a place for drones making a big difference? Yeah, Shiv, uh, I can start with the many examples. The prime on my list will be communications. So what you guys all have noticed that you know, we are going transitioning soon from the 4G to 5G network. I'll just start with this particular example. Now, any time we jumpstart from one network to a futuristic network, the whole infrastructure has to be viably changed or modified to an extent which calls for a huge amount of investment. Now, this is mostly terrestrial, that is land-based. So the first thing is, how about taking your 4G and 5G networks into the sky and starting to beam them down? Now, this is a class of drones which are coming up called the high-altitude pseudo-satellites, which beam down internet, which beam down emergency res response networks, which beam down private networks. Anybody can create a private network, which are destined to you know, be your cell phone towers in the skies. Why? Simply because they, the economy of putting them up in the air is going to match very strategically and competitively with the cost of setting up a whole amount of infra infrastructure on the land. And this is where communication is going to be a big, big booster in the days ahead. This can be on any class of drone, but majorly it should support a payload and should be part of some network. That, that is where communications is heading towards. Uh, we as a company are involved with Hindustan Aeronautics in developing something called the HAPS. And one of the core areas which the government of India is going to focus on is creating emergency networks in hard to reach areas in India. So mountainous areas, you know, a lot of you will complain you're not getting a good network in those particular areas or certain hard to reach areas. These will be supported by these drones, these, uh, you know, futuristic cell phone towers in the skies. Japan is already doing it. 
there are companies like SoftBank and Aero Environment doing that. So this is one major area where you'll have. Future is also about smart cities. Now, again, if you can have a grid of drones operating over a city like Delhi, you know, you start right from urban planning, infrastructure support, traffic management, uh, you know, going further, security, tourism and hospitality. Everything can be managed very effectively with a 24-7, 365 eye in the sky. The results are instantaneous, you know, assisted by autonomy as well as artificial intelligence. One can update a lot of data which can be useful to react to a situation or, you know, creating better infrastructure, better support, harnessing the true power of staying together as a much better race going forward. So this, this is another area, I think, which is going to come up. Uh, you know, you, you already touched upon uh, a lot of things like logistics, yeah. uh, medicine delivery, et cetera, et cetera. Other areas include, you know, hospitality and tourism in uh, isolation. Uh, going forward, even I'll say journalism is one part or emergency response, disaster relief. These are, these are something which are, you know, some natural recourses to drones like these. And of course, when we go into specific areas, uh, conservation is another one which is right now not looked after, but I think that is where things, uh, you know, being continuously monitored is going to uh, finally help the state look after its very meager set of resources, yeah. which all of us have to employ. So drones are here to stay, as I said before, and it is on us, the onus is on us as users, and the ask is from the government to where they would want to plug in a system which can fly in the air as, some, as simple as, you know, a Windows computer, which has a lot of apps, and that is what the fidelity of a drone can give you. It can carry a lot of payloads and, and harness the power of sharing this information, using data to reduce the timelines to respond or create a better system for all, us, uh, all of us to stay in. Some of the images you're seeing on our screen behind us are, are real images uh, of the drones uh, that have been supplied by these companies uh, and what they're doing with both civilian and military institutions. Ankit, to you now, uh, because your drone, uh, Idea Forge drones, like you said, every 15 minutes one's being launched, uh, and they are being launched in all manner of uh, spheres, traffic management in Telangana to, uh, you know, agriculture, figuring out which crops are growing better. I know they're deployed in all of these things. But looking into the future, crystal ball gazing into the future, where what is your wish list or your... Uh, you know, uh, your expectation where you think drones will make a big difference to Indians' lives? I think uh, one thing which is going to happen uh, very, very soon is that just like uh, Samir was mentioning that these drones have to be deployed in a manner that they are always available. The experience is going to change. The experience is going to change drastically in terms of today requiring you to plan a drone deployment versus it being almost always available for you to deploy at a moment's notice. So I think the penetration, density, and the way we deploy these systems is going to evolve significantly going forward in the future. And a lot of very creative applications are going to come up, which you were just asking, Samir, and some of the one that came to my mind was people are building drones for going into deep shaft mines so that they can help do structural analysis and threat analysis on those mines before people go in there. They are building drones for plucking fruits from uh, orchids and other areas. They're building drones for doing afforestation in a large way. Wherever uh, trees are being cut after forest fires, they're using drones for afforestation by dropping seed balls and uh, seed cones to try and uh, germinate and regerminate forests. So I think it's going to be a very, very exciting environment and it is desirable as well because we invest so much time and energy in building infrastructure that uh, we have completely changed the landscape of Mother Earth in a way that suits our needs in our urban conglomerates and agglomerates and so many other areas. Whereas drones have the ability to, as a unit, free us from the need for building ground infrastructure in so many cases. Limit the amount of ground infrastructure required, but move a lot of the mobility in the air and use ground infrastructure for doing relatively more uh, bulkier things that may not be as efficient in the air. So I feel that the world is going to change its colors in terms of how we will reduce the dependence free of the earth to 
let the nature take back control on ground, but move a lot of us also operating in the air as urban air mobility and logistics move up in the air as well in the future. The, 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 the future of drone, uh, drone technology is extremely exciting. You've heard uh, both Ankit and Samir talk about the various places where it's going to plug in, but there are concerns, uh, and we're not going to shy away from talking about them because uh, one of the sort of disturbing ways drones have entered our lives recently is what we saw happen in Jammu, Samir. Uh, where you saw our not very friendly neighbor send explosives laden drones across the border uh, and actually manage to attack a base. Straight question, Samir, is there, a, is there a reliable defense against this kind of mini drone warfare, uh, you know, that obviously has been opened against us and in many other places as well? Yeah, before I answer your question, all I'll say, don't shoot the messenger. <laughs> yeah. I'll come down to now specifically. See, countering drones is a humongous task. And uh, let's be very honest about it. No nation in this world has that capability to counter you know, drones 24-7 coming from any direction at any place uh, on the sovereign. So how do you do it? Uh, the first thing is we need to control the inflow and outflow of drones, uh, the major components used. We need to have in place, which, uh, which uh, mind you, is already being done through DGFT. You need to have in place certain measures, certain uh, policies, like the newly released drone policy, which uh, definitely gives you a lot of leeway, but at the same time asks you to register all drones which you have. You build up that database. So these are the two initial measures which you need to definitely have to kind of monitor what's happening in this uh, particular uh, space. But then anybody who's going to use a drone in a way which is harmful for the nation is not going to be part of the system. And for this, you require certain layers of detection to engagement. Now these layers, uh, we have been talking, you know, recently all of you would be listening a lot to these layers. These are called the counter drone systems. Now counter drone systems have the detection layer which can be a radar or a electro optical sensor or an infrared sensor or radio sounding, imaging, as well as other means. But mind you, they have to be looking in the right direction to actually pick up a target which is coming. Again, when you, when you give, you know, the initiative is with the attacker. And second is, once you have detected, you should have the response to take it down. This response can be kinetic or it can be uh, non-kinetic. So generally, non-kinetic response is easier to get uh, which uses, you know, disrupting the communication as well as the navigation means of a particular class of drones. Thereafter, you have kinetic means, which not all agencies can have, which uh, are limited to more like uh, central paramilitary as well as the military, which utilize, uh, you know, weapons to get it down or advanced technologies which are now entering this field, electromagnetic waves or lasers, etc. Now, all of this, remember, imposes a certain cost. So a question if somebody asks, can we defend against drones? Theoretically, if there is undefined cost matrix attached, yes, you can. You can cover the whole country with these systems, but can you afford it? That is a question. Not even the United States can afford it. So the second question is, how, how do we build up that threat perception? That is where you map areas where you think the threat is going to be. Now, generally, these counter drones uh, systems can cover areas up till about 5 to 10 kilometers. So these zones around these vital action, uh, 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 very important and very uh, protective areas are where we kind of position these counter drone systems. And you can give a limited amount of defenses towards that. We already have these systems deployed at very core VIP areas in the, uh, uh, in the NCR region. At the same time now, I think the government is taking up the policy to beef up similar systems, especially in uh, wake of Jammu attack all across India. So, uh, just to end here, this is a very, very difficult field. And, uh, you know, drones are also improving. Drones are also taking stock of what countermeasures are being, you know, put up against them. And they're also improving their systems. Uh, just to give you an example, the non-kinetic ways are to jam the communication of the drone or jam the GPS or spoof the GPS. Ladies and gentlemen, I, coming from this field, can confidently telling you by next year, you will have drones in the market which will beat both these systems down. So what do you do? That means all the infrastructure which has been built across, you know, all across India it over the years, redundant. it becomes redundant. 
So it is like a drone, a counter drone, and then counter counter drone. So this little thing is going to continue uh, till the time the technology is going to play catch up and then you build up better technology. In the end, we'll have to keep spending our money. That's the, where it lies. The, the drone wars are definitely here. Uh, Preeti, I'm going to take your permission to ask just one final little question because uh, everyone knows that China has been this big drone superpower, uh, Ankit. Uh, can India be that? What does the government need to do? Is there a danger of you know, some kind of a bubble in drones? Uh, you know, we are making drones. These are all made in India drones. Why can't India be the kind of drone superpower that China is? I think, uh, you know, it's a very uh, good question, uh, Shiv, because overall one really has that deep hunger of building uh, drones which are extremely cutting edge from our country. I think we have to pick and choose our battles and we have to target and be great at a few segments. We cannot be great at every segment, but we have to be great at a few segments. And I think what is really important in that direction is to focus a lot on intellectual property. If you do not focus on intellectual property and doing things which are unique, better, then it is going to be a me too game which only boils down to price. And I think we would all agree in this room that in the short run there is no escaping the fact that who will have the price advantage. And it's about short run. Nobody knows what will happen in the long run. So I think we need to be very clear in our minds that when we attack this industry, we attack it for building technology in India, for building technology in a way that has not been built elsewhere in the world and therefore take it to everywhere in the world. Otherwise, we will not be able to win this race. It is a race that cannot be won by, won by aping them. It's a race that's going to be won by flying ahead of them. All of us look uh, closely forward to drones from both your companies and other Indian companies making the lives of Indians better and definitely making the country safer. And as we've demonstrated, they already are. Thank you very much, Samir. Thank you very much, Ankit. Thank you.